Scientists claim wood pellet production like that of Enviva creates environmental issues. A local mission feeds 2,500 and a local athlete signs to play college football on the D1 level. All that and more on today's edition of Live at 5. Richmond County's nightly news starts right now. Welcome to Live at 5. I'm Lance Jenkins. And I'm Sierra McQueen. Folks, big announcement. Good Morning Sand Hills, which will feature us. Yes. Is going to debut January 22nd. That's, so they go ahead and uh, mark your calendars. That's right. <laughs> mark them. It's Monday. Uh, so, you, I mean, you can start your week off brand new, brand new routine. Listen to Good Morning Sand Hills every weekday, Monday through Friday, 6 to 8 a.m. I'm excited. I am very excited. It's no more sleeping in during the week, though. That, no, those days are well, gone. not for us. Yeah, <laughs> yeah course, not for us. <laughs> but it's, it's going to be a lot of fun. I'm excited about it. Uh, it's, we're going to be talking about it from now for the rest of the year and into January right here on this show. And, of course, you'll, it, we introduce Sierra to you, what, in October? Yep, October. Well, you're going to get five days a week with That's her right. come January 22nd. <laughs> so, folks, big, big time. Good morning, Sand Hills. Debuts Monday, January the 22nd. That's it, folks. And one other thing, actually, while I'm here, Breakfast with Santa. Um, I was just sent this flyer, if you can see it. Um, December 2nd, Hamlet Fire Department putting this on in partnership with the Richmond Service League. Uh, $5 includes a pancake breakfast and your picture with Santa. Uh, for kids. This is a fundraiser, really going to be a neat thing. Proceeds from this event are used to purchase items for Toys for Tots. Oh, that's awesome. That is awesome, isn't it? And of course, that's we'll be talking about it all week. But folks, we got lots of news to talk about, so let's get right to it. Now for tonight's top story. The use of wood as a fuel for fire and energy has been around since the beginning of time. Recently, however, a group of world-renowned scientists voiced their concerns over the potential new direction and environmental hazards of this practice regarding the new Enviva plant in Hamlet. Dr. William H. Shellsinger recently discussed a letter that he and over 100 scientists wrote to North Carolina Governor Roy Cooper. The letter outlined their concerns with the pellet plants recently built in North Carolina and Virginia, as well as the new plant currently planned for Richmond County. These plants are owned and operated by Enviva, the world's largest producer of wood pellets. The pellets are manufactured from wood and then transported to port for loading onto ships to be delivered to Europe. Once in Europe, the pellets are delivered to and used by power plants to generate electricity. According to the scientist's letter, the wood needed to feed Enviva's plants will require approximately 135 acres of forest each day. Enviva expects to produce 600,000 metric tons of wood pellets per year of finished product at the local facility and currently plans to be operating the Hamlet plant by the first quarter of 2019. While there is a significant debate concerning the environmental pros and cons of the wood pellet industry, the Enviva plant coming to Richmond County has looked upon favorably by most. The plant brings 80 direct jobs with wages 23% above the current county average, as well as other employment opportunities for local loggers and truck drivers. In a county that has suffered for years from the fallout of textile jobs vanishing and moving offshore, new industry and the associated tax base can be viewed as positive economic news. For the full story, visit richmondobserver.com. Earlier this month, Richmond Raiders senior running back Dante Miller who has been recruited by several Division I football programs this fall, verbally committed to a full scholarship to play football at James Madison University in Harrisonburg, Virginia. JMU, which is a member of the Colonial Athletic Association, has won the CAA conference title each of the last three years. More impressively, Miller will be joining a JMU program that won the 2016 FCS National Championship. And the Dukes are currently 11-0 and are the number one seed in this year's bracket as they look to defend the FCS title. Get the full story at richmondobserver.com or on the RO app. October was an award-winning month for Richmond County Emergency Services. At the annual North Carolina Public Safety Communications Conference held in Cherokee, North Carolina, Christine Collins, Mary Ganey, and Calvin Smith were honored with two state-level awards from the North Carolina Chapter of National Emergency Number Association and the North Carolina Chapter of the Association of Public Safety Communications Officials for their efforts during the fatal bus accident that occurred in Richmond County on September 17th of 2016. 
This team of telecommunicators was awarded the 2017 Communications Team of the Year and the 2017 Shift of the Year Award for their role in the response to this event. Congratulations goes out to them. And there's much more on RichmondObserver.com and on the RO app today, including a story about local staple Amy Faw and her story of resilience and faith and your Richmond County Public Schools honor rolls and much, much more. Coming up next, folks, I'll interview Siobhan Wallace of East Rockingham United Methodist Church, and we will talk about a local mission during the Thanksgiving holiday that fed 2,500 people. That's coming up next, right after this. McNair Auto Sales is the place to buy your pre-owned car, truck, or van. To be the best, it takes big selection, friendly staff, and great pricing. We guarantee a no-hassle buying experience, and financing is available right on site. So come see us today. We're located at 1026 East Broad Avenue in Rockingham. And remember, with over 40 years of experience, you know McNair is the name you can trust. At Richmond Community College, we can prepare you for a high-skill, high-paying career in a variety of fields. From business to education, engineering, Utilities, healthcare, criminal justice, information technology, and human services. At Richmond Community College, we can save you thousands of dollars on tuition through our university transfer programs that provide a seamless transition to universities and colleges throughout North Carolina. At Richmond Community College, we are always developing new courses and programs in response to the communities we serve. We offer day, evening, and online courses, and you can now complete five curriculum programs entirely online. At Richmond Community College, we believe in helping you prepare for a better life. Richmond Community College, local college, big impact. I'm Kelly. I worked at Champion Ford for two years. Six years. Three years. One year. I've been at Champion Ford for 13 years. One whole year. 15 years. I'm Jamie and I've been at Champion Ford for 12 years. I've been here eight years. Champion prices, champion service, champion experience. It treat you like a champion today at Champion Ford. Just down the road from high prices, championfordlincoln.com. We are Champion Ford. Family Pharmacy has been serving Richmond County since April 2007, and we have enjoyed getting to know our customers since then. We take our jobs very seriously, and we'll do whatever we can to make sure you have what you need. Come visit us on Fayetteville Road in Rockingham, and we will treat you like family. And welcome back to Live at Five. And of course, I have the pleasure now of being joined by Siobhan Wallace, lay leader and church member over at East Rockingham mm -hmm. United Methodist Church. I grew up a Methodist, and you said to me uh, off off air a minute ago, "That's the way to do it." It's the way to do it. <laughs> well, so so let's let's talk about something that the East Rockingham United Methodist Church has been involved in, has really um, led in this community over the last several years. And I want to talk about the evolution of this project, a ministry that this year on Saturday, November eighteenth fed over 2,500 people in mm -hmm. this community. Let's talk about that. How did that get started? Um, one of our members, Boyce Carpenter, uh, seven years ago, um, basically had the idea, um, let's have a Thanksgiving meal um, specifically for um, seniors, at least that's what it was the first year. And um, our church embraced it. And uh, we served about 75 to 80 people the first year. And um, since that, um, we have um, basically evolved into having about 12 other churches help. Um, we have volunteers from across the county um, and this year we served over 2,500 plates 
um, across Richmond County. Wow, how about that? And of course, so this got started serving seniors. Mm -hmm. And so what groups were you serving to? Um, we use the Council on Aging mm -hmm. um, and we're able to basically give um, vouchers to uh, members at the Senior, senior Center um, first. Mm -hmm. uh, we then expanded um, to soup kitchens, um, to the Meals on Wheels programs across the county, um, and to um, the schools. Right. So, and this, obviously this project has grown even in six years' time. So maybe 2,500 people, that's a lot of people to be served, um, especially in a time like this, mm -hmm. uh, around the holiday season where as Thanksgiving kind of kicks off things, and a lot of times this isn't a real special time for people who are in need. Um, and of course, this mission targets exactly that, people in need. So you said Boyce Carpenter, mm -hmm. is he a member of East Rock and He Hill? is. He's one of our, my favorite members. How about that? So he's one of your favorite members? Yeah. And his wife, Marlena, I got the pleasure of speaking to her on uh -huh. the phone, and she set all this up for us. Mm -hmm. And you know, she signs my pride of the project, too. This was his, his and her vision, yeah? It, it was. He, um, it was just, just like a lot of other um, missions across, you know, across the, the county and across the state. Um, it starts by one person having an idea, um, praying about it. We prayed about it as a church, um, and we kind of, we went with it. We, we went on faith, and it's amazing what has happened since. Now, let's talk about Miss Dina Cook. Um, mm -hmm. she, uh, she obviously has been instrumental in this project mm -hmm. as well. How so? Um, well, her church, the Church of God of Prophecy in Rockingham, um, was really um, the first church that kind of really helped us, especially with both the fundraising aspect, because it cost a lot of money, um, and we are a fairly small church. Um, it costs a lot of money to do this, and she um, also has helped us um, build relationships and build bridges um, with other groups in the county um, to get more meals out. She's there on Saturday to help us serve, um, and, and honestly, without all of the volunteers in the other churches, we would not be able to do nearly the number we have been able to. Absolutely. So and it's really neat to see churches kind of come together mm -hmm. to serve one need because uh, we have so many churches in this area, but we have so uh, so many problems that if we all came together, they could they could be addressed. And one of them is certainly this type of thing, hunger, mm -hmm. and especially in times of need and around the holidays. So it's really neat to see the churches come together for me. Mm -hmm. uh, and you've got so many other groups that come together. What are some of the types of entities that come together to put this project on every year? Well, it's not just the churches. Um, this year we had Hamlet Middle School, Rockingham Middle School, and several middle schools in Scotland County um, that actually were able to volunteer in the morning. Um, from about 8 o'clock to about 1030, we have a continuous line of um, basically to-go plates. So volunteers basically stand in line um, and get these to-go plates ready, box them up, um, and get them out. Um, and additionally, we have members from pretty much all the 12 churches um, that either um, have brought desserts to help, um, they do help us um, to some degree uh, make some of the food, um, and then they're there to also help serve that, that week. Wow, and so a great project. and. Uh, I'm assuming that the anticipation is that you all will do this again next year. It, it is. We're already starting to plan for next year. Um, and, uh, you know, every year it's gotten bigger. And it, every year for at least the last couple of years, I think at least, you know, we've done about all we can do. Um, but, but through faith, uh, through prayer, every year we've gotten bigger. Um, and every year we've been able to meet, to meet the need that's there. Tremendous, tremendous mission. Uh, going on around, has it had been at, at every year at Thanksgiving time? Mm -hmm. It's every year the Saturday before Thanksgiving. Every year the Saturday before Thanksgiving. What a wonderful ministry. Church is coming together. Uh, one person comes up with this vision and look what's happened now. 2,500 people fed on Saturday, November 18th because of one vision that started and became something bigger. Um, tremendous, tremendous mission and we wish them much success next year and it's really neat to see stuff like that happen around the holidays. Mm -hmm. So. It, it is amazing what, what God can do um, and what we as Christians can do um, with a little bit of prayer, a little bit of work, um, and a lot of faith. Fantastic. You saw uh, Ms. Cook as well as the Carpenters on the screen here. And, of course, we're happy to have Siobhan Wallace in studio today to talk about this great mission over from East Rockingham United Methodist Church. Mm -hmm. Pleasure to have you in studio. Thank you so much. Folks, we will be right back for more Live at 5, Weather and Sports, right after this.
Willow Tree Antiques and Gifts is all about rustic home decor and gifts. You will always find a variety of unique antiques, vintage, and new items in our shop. Come and see our selection of housewarming, new baby, and wedding gifts. For the man in your life, we have many collectibles, boker knives, and leather. And ladies love the jewelry, purses, candles, hats, and t-shirts. We also offer a 30-day layaway program. Come and experience shopping at Willow Tree Antiques and Gifts. Welcome back to Live at Five. The Richmond Raiders basketball season preview is now available on richmondobserver.com and on the RO app. Read about the first year coach Donald Pettigrew and more in today's sports section. Now let's go to Kelsey for the five-day forecast. Thanks, Sierra. Today's five-day weather forecast is brought by Richmond County Hospice. As I just said, we're now moved on to the five-day weather instead of three-day weather, which I hope you all enjoy. But despite that, I hope you all enjoyed your holiday weekend with family and friends and that if you're anything like me and enjoy said activity, you're still eating Thanksgiving even to this day because I love Thanksgiving. But in that, let's go on and move on to your five-day weather forecast starting with Tuesday. Tuesday, I have a 0% chance of rain with a high of 65 and a low of 39. As well as Wednesday, Wednesday will also have a low of 39 with a high of 69 and a 10% chance of rain. Thursday will also have a 10% chance of rain with a high of 64 and a low of 42, which is going to be a little bit warmer that evening. And then Friday will have a 10% chance of rain with a high of 62 and a below freezing of 32 that evening. Saturday will have a 10% chance of rain as well as the past three other days with a high of 58 and a low of 35. And a new feature with weather is the current temperatures throughout different areas of Richmond County, including Norman, Ellerby, Hoffman, Rockingham, and Hamlet. Starting in Norman, it, will, it is going to be 61 degrees, and then LRB will be 62, as well as Hoffman. And then moving on from there, Rockingham will be 33, with a current temperature of th also 33 in Hamlet as well. So that's your weather, and I hope you enjoyed today's episode of Live at Five. And that's it for your Monday edition of Live at Five. Kelsey, thanks for doing the weather. And Sierra, great to do the show with you. Thank you. I had fun, as usual. A and we're going to have a lot of fun come January. Yeah. I hope you don't get tired of me. I hope you don't get tired of me because <laughs> coming up, Jan remember, January 22nd. That's right. Monday, it's going to be a big day. Good morning, Sand Hills, the first morning show of its kind in this area, and we're really, really excited about it. So, And that's it for tonight. That's it. Folks, bring it on Tuesday. Bring it on Tuesday. <laughs> we will see you tomorrow for another edition of Live at Five, Richmond County's Nightly News. I'm Lance Jenkins. I'm Sierra McQueen. And we'll see you tomorrow night for another edition of Live at Five. So long.